A good night's sleep is so important for your health. But the reality is that one in three of us aren't getting enough. So we built this dreamy sleep house where a group of contestants will compete to improve their sleep. Using advanced sleep tracking technology and infrared cameras, our judges will analyze our contestants' sleep habits and find strategies to improve their rest. The contestants with the highest sleep score in the first two episodes will proceed to the final, where one will be crowned the super sleeper. Get ready for a week of science and surprises, where we'll all be sleeping with friends. My name is Greg Brown, and I am one half of the YouTube channel ASAP Science. Chamomile tea has been shown to help promote sleep. It contains a compound known as apigenin. My sleep issue is that I get up a lot at night to pee a lot. But in general, I think I'm a good sleeper. Feel oh, good. I'm happy to see the sun. Hey there, bud. I am here to learn. I, in fact, am as good a sleeper as I think I am. And then I also want to learn tips about how to become a better sleeper because I know how important it is for your health. I'm Melissa Maribel, and I teach chemistry on YouTube for high school and college students. Covalent compounds consist of two non-metals. My main sleep issue is the fact that I just, I worry way too much about everything that I have to do. I constantly feel stressed and overwhelmed, and I really want to figure out how to actually sleep. Like, everyone should know how to do that by now. I just, I can't live like this anymore. I'm your host, Vanessa Hill, and I'm here with our judges, Dr. Ali Martu and Trace Dominguez. They will help me assess our first two contestants' sleep quality based on EEG data and a series of wake-up tests. I may not break the phone. <laughs> Together, we'll explore why we sleep and what you can do to improve your own shut-eye. By the end of the competition, you will learn everything you need to know to get a good, relaxing, undisturbed night of sleep. Because sleep is super important. I mean, we spend a third of our lives sleeping for a reason. Well, with that much practice, you think we'd be better at it. But as a society, we're failing to get enough sleep, which is why we're here with our first contestants. Welcome to our house of slumber, where you'll compete to achieve the best night's sleep. Greg, you've certainly dressed the part. Yeah, I'm freaking excited. I'm ready to go to sleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, how are you feeling? I'm nervous, but I'm excited to finally improve my sleep because it's a problem. <laughs> Greg, do you have any sleep issues you're hoping to tackle? I pee all the time, <laughs> all through the night. Lots and lots of pee, 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 pee. <laughs> I worry way too much. So I have like, like these anxious moments just lying in bed, just constantly thinking about what I have to do the next day. Greg, what's the worst night of sleep that you've ever had? Actually, on our YouTube channel recently, we stayed awake for 36 hours. And in the morning at around 7 uh, a.m., I started crying. <laughs> I was like, I just can't <laughs> do it. I discovered TikTok. So it's like the worst day you've ever had yeah, compared yeah. to the worst sleep that you've ever yeah, had. Yeah, it was true. There was no sleeping involved. But it made me realize what it feels like when you don't sleep. It was awful. Melissa, what's the worst sleep that you've ever had? Pulling an all-nighter yeah. and then like feeling jittery in the morning and not feeling like myself. Like my brain was just not okay. Melissa, you may benefit from some tips and tricks that will help you have a calm night's sleep. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you will have the chance to test out the latest sleep technology to help you win. Ooh. We have some surprises in store for you and then our judges will determine who slept best and will proceed to the final round. Greg and Melissa, please make your way to the bedrooms to wind down before bed. Bring it on. <laughs> OK, I see, I see. Let's go sleep. Gosh, here we go. go. Uh, my main thing to go to bed is always have to floss. It's curly wipes, got to get them white. Take off all of my makeup, which takes forever. After that, I put away my phone. So I can, I am not allowed to look at my phone or else I will stay there for hours and never go to bed. I'm nervous to go to bed. I think it is weird to be sleeping in like a random place in a random bed. So I'm not like feeling super comfortable, but I have faith that I will be okay. Over in the sleep lab, our judges are settling in. Our contestants bravely agreed to let us observe their sleep. Our first night in the sleep lab, how are you feeling? I'm feeling excited. Yeah. 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 We have Greg and Melissa getting into bed. 
So we can see they're wearing an EEG right here and it's reading the patterns of electrical activity in their brain and kind of spitting that out on our screen here where we see brain waves. What we'll see is a dominant brainwave for each stage of sleep that they go into. So light sleep, we'll see one kind of wave. Deep sleep, we see really slow waves. And then REM sleep, our brainwaves actually look really similar to when we're awake. For a quick recap, we have four stages of shut-eye. Two are light sleep, then there's deep and REM sleep, which both make up 20 to 25% of a young adult's night. REM and deep sleep are important for learning and memory but deep sleep is best for restoring your body, mind, and energy levels. Using our brain station EEG, we see the pattern of brain activity change as our contestants cycle through these stages roughly every 90 minutes. We're hoping they enjoy the recommended amount of sleep, at least seven hours a night. Look at Melissa, she's struggling. She's struggling with sleep. Wait, is he on? What is he eating? Is that a cookie? It looks like it's covered in chocolate. You know, you're not supposed to eat too much before you go to bed, not supposed to eat right before you go to bed. Both of those things can cause problems with your sleep. What this can do is make you feel more awake exactly yeah. when you're trying to feel more tired. What about a nightcap? Is that gonna help you fall asleep? Alcohol can help open up blood vessels and help you feel more calm, but too much alcohol is gonna cause problems in your sleep stage movement. And then when you wake up, I believe that's called a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of water. You're also not supposed to do too much water. I mean, hydration's okay. important, but. All right, well. Okay, he's settling in now. Yeah, he's yeah. had his midnight snack. Yeah. The EEG showing that he's entered his light stages of yeah. sleep. His yeah. brain yeah. has just kind of ticked over. Whoa. What? Oh, no, Melissa. No, we've got, we got phone. Oh, it just. So much you activity. You can see the iPhone right there. Oh. No, he's getting more back. water for. Oh, no. He's no, no, going no. to have a bathroom yeah. break. He's just yeah. preparing now. Melissa told us she normally uses melatonin at home, but we can see here she's doing fine without it. It's just not very loud, but yeah. there's a snore. Yeah. It's, it's a nice snore. <laughs> no snore. You're judging nice. snores now? Yeah, there's quality to snore. <laughs> Greg's up. Oh. Greg's up. He's up. Greg's up. We got He's another gone. bathroom break. We see that people get more deep sleep earlier in the night, in mm -hmm. the first half of the night, and that you really want that restful, restorative mm -hmm. deep sleep, and he just keeps waking up. He is very still. Yeah. We can see that he's getting a lot of deep sleep, yeah. which surprises me because he's yeah. in and out of bed so frequently. The sun is rising, the birds are chirping, and our contestants are squeezing in their final minutes of sleep. It's time to go wake them up. How did you sleep? It was honestly oh. so bad. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. How did you sleep? Barely. Oh no, that's horrible. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna head downstairs to okay. do our wake up test. Each morning, we'll test our contestants' memory, reaction time, and motor skills, and check in on their mood, which all help determine how restful and restorative their night's sleep was. Good Hello. morning, sleepyhead. Oh, my God. Have a seat. It's time wow. for your wake-up testing. This is V-Sci-Fi. So I have 10 words here. I'm going to read all of them out, and then let's see what you remember. OK. So the first word is let. Herb, Herb, dish, okay. gull, okay. sore. Sorry. How many words can you remember? Okay. Sore, let, gull, crab, dish, song, herb, um, black, drop. I think that's it. That's eight, okay. which is a fantastic score. Okay, okay, yes. okay. 10 out of 10 on your memory score, Melissa. Okay. <laughs> when you see the number, you have to tap the phone. Okay. And then it will stop. I'm ready. Okay. That was a good time. Okay, that was we just a good came one. straight in there from warming your hands up. <laughs> Let me not break the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So your average reaction time was 360 milliseconds. OK. 340 milliseconds. OK. Which is a good time. OK. We have a list of emotions, and I'll need you to circle what you feel, do not feel, slightly feel, and definitely feel. I feel 
kind of lively, which is really weird. Definitely do not feel lively. Tired, yes, I am definitely feeling tired. I feel weirdly really good. Peppy, <laughs> no, I do not. You seem a little peppy. <laughs> Joining us is our resident therapist, Katie Morton, to talk through their concerns about their sleep. My name is Katie Morton, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Hi, Hi Katie. I'm Katie. Nice, nice to meet nice you. Meet you. How was your sleep last night? Uh, bad, I think. People don't realize how important sleep is for overall mood regulation. If we don't get at least seven and a half hours of sleep every night, which I know seems like a lot, it's like waking up without a sense of purpose, you can lack motivation, not to mention resiliency. So sleep is just really important and something that I'm constantly, you know, trying to talk to my patients about. So if we limited the amount of water that you drink, let's say like a couple of hours before bed, and yes. you'll feel thirsty, Yes. but I promise you will survive, Yes. <laughs> then yeah. maybe that will like nip that in the bud. And then as far as the anxious thoughts. Yeah, if I've done an event or something like for ASAP Science or for my job, that's when I can't sleep. Give yourself more time to unwind. If you find your brain is humming with like things you want to do or things I should have said or whatever, having a notepad by your bed and writing that stuff out hmm. just to get it out. Yeah. Can sometimes stop that from like spiraling. Oh, that's interesting. Up. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. So we have a couple ideas of things we can yeah, do. And the journaling, that's good. Yeah, get it, get, it gets it out of your head so that you're not ruminating. Yeah, okay, cool. Hopefully tonight's better. I know, me too. Fingers crossed. Hi, I'm Katie. Melissa. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Okay, what happened? I, I could barely sleep, so I couldn't really get to sleep. Is that something that is common? It definitely is. Okay. So whenever I have a lot of projects going on, which mm -hmm. is definitely now, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just staying awake thinking, you know, don't forget about this. What I would like you to try tonight is what I call four by four breathing. Okay. And that means we breathe in for four seconds, we hold it at the top for four, mm -hmm. and breathe out for four seconds, and you do it four times. Okay. The fact that we have to count Hmm. distracts our mind so that it can't ruminate. But the same thing t starts to happen where you start to feel like, I don't know, and worried and uh, get out of bed. Okay. Maybe read a book for a little bit. It sounds weird, but if we lay in bed and let our mind do that, it actually makes it harder the next night for us to fall asleep. We're almost like training our brain to think like, oh, when we're in bed, we feel anxious. Katie is definitely helpful because she's basically forcing me to address this issue and change it and actually providing me the tools to do so. Let's give it a try. Hopefully it helps. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Greg and Melissa, thanks for sleeping with us last night. Let's review some highlights from your evening. Greg, let's start with you. Oh, God, OK. <laughs> I did eat a snack. I don't know what it was you were eating, a cookie or a granola bar or something. <laughs> <laughs> but the sugar in there, the carbohydrates, your body has to work through that before it can actually get good restful sleep. Water, yes. Stay hydrated. Oh yeah. Classic. I can't believe I did that. Oh, oh gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, though. <laughs> it was hot. You look peaceful. OK. Yeah. So I ended up asleep eventually. I really feel like I did poorly, but then seeing myself in deep sleep at the end made me think maybe I'm doubting myself. I don't know. Greg, last night you were in bed for 7 hours and 20 minutes, but you only slept for six hours. Oh, OK. Our EEG revealed that it took you 32 minutes to fall asleep. Huh. In that six hours, you actually received two hours and four minutes of deep sleep. <laughs> so this amount of deep sleep could explain why you were so peppy this morning and I, why yeah. you performed really well on the morning tests. Your score from the first night of sleeping with friends is Oh my god, oh my god. <gasps> oh, okay. Oh, wow. That's okay. amazing. An you hour and 30 so minutes well. of REM sleep. Oh my gosh. Okay, that is not, mm -hmm. genuinely not what I would have thought. 74 proud. is a good score, which okay. reflects the good night's sleep that you did have. Okay, wow. Melissa, let's talk about your evening last night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I didn't like that pillow. Oh, my gosh, you even <laughs> tried the pillow? I tried one? all the pillows. Oh, oh, yeah, I totally did that, yep. Just a little bit of screen time. I did. It's a big no-no. You're going to see notifications. It's going to activate your mind. You're going to get emotional. And the blue light from your phone, it might make you more alert, might wake you up when you're trying to relax. Don't do that. OK. Oh, you look like they're in so much pain. Oh, my god! <laughs> 
Instagram. Yikes. So our EEG showed that it only took you 24 minutes to fall asleep oh. last night. You fell asleep faster than Greg, and you also received more sleep. You slept for six hours and 47 minutes. Oh. But uh, you had a very restless sleep. Hmm. Melissa, your score on night one of sleeping with friends is... Keep going, keep going, come on. <gasps> 63! Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I can pee all I want today. <laughs> I can now reveal a twist in our scoring. Okay. Of course. So you're not actually competing against each other. Huh. You're competing against yourselves. So tonight, you'll be trying to improve upon last night, and you won't be doing it alone. Welcome to your first challenge. Tonight, you'll each be testing a sleep aid. Ooh, cool, yeah. I'm into that. So our first item is a pair of Somnilite orange tinted glasses. One of you will wear these for two hours before bed to block out blue light that comes from our screens and devices. Interesting. Uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> our second item is a Berebi weighted blanket Ooh. that will compress your muscles, set your mind at ease, and set you up for a beautiful night's sleep. You can only choose one, uh -huh. and our contestant who fell asleep the fastest oh. in night one gets to pick first. So I'm gonna go with the weighted blanket. Oh, wow. Okay, Great yeah. choice. Yeah, I know. If one I wanted, <laughs> you are strategic. <laughs> well, the 90s are very in right now. <laughs> wow, yeah. everything <laughs> has changed. Wow, you're going down, oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Melissa, your blanket will be waiting for you in your bedroom. Uh -huh. It's almost time for night two, so sweet dreams. Oh, my okay. God. Okay. okay, again, rushing to sleep. Let's do that. <laughs> So I had a better score than Melissa, which is great, but throughout the day, I felt like I was consistently telling her how poorly I slept, how tired I was, and so I felt like a big baby when we found out. I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, because she was sort of leaning into the fact that she must have slept better, but she did not. I took Katie's advice and journaled right before bed, which was honestly really helpful. This is a chaotic thing to be doing, and so journaling it out made me be like, no, okay, you're here, like, just go to bed, like, this is fine. So I picked something called the Somni Light Amber Glasses. So they get rid of the blue light, which is something that you shouldn't really be consuming before bed. I am addicted to my phone, so I thought this would be a cool opportunity to try them out and also be able to go on my phone before bed. <laughs> this is the sleep molecule. It's melatonin. I typically take one melatonin every single night just to help me. I am not allowed to take melatonin here, but because I don't have that now, I fear that my mind is thinking, you need melatonin to fall asleep. There is a lot of pressure weighing on this next night. I have to get my act together to be able to win this. I'm definitely gonna keep with those breathing exercises because I did feel like it relaxed myself and like my mind was able to calm itself. The weighted blanket feels kind of like armor. So it feels like this sense of security, which is really weird to say about a blanket. Night two. Yep. Are you ready? Ready. Here's Greg. Come on, Greg. I'm hoping to see Greg make some improvements in yeah. his sleep hygiene. So on one screen, we see Melissa trying to get into the headspace of sleep, and then on the other screen, we see Greg, who's just watching something on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> so he has his orange-tinted glasses. What's this actually doing to his brain? I really love these glasses, or at least the idea of them. They're taking the blue light out of the lights in the room or the light on his screen. All light is not created equal. Blue light that comes from our devices can inhibit your production of melatonin, a brain chemical that helps you feel sleepy. Inside of the brain is the SCN, the suprachiasmatic nucleus. It's connected to the eyes through a number of different brain structures. And the idea is as it regulates your melatonin throughout the day, it's gonna ramp it up and down depending on how much blue light you're mm. gonna see. It's nice to have that at night if you use a lot of screens. I still get concerned if people use their phones a lot while in bed. We really want bed just to be associated with sleeping. Mm. Craig has a lot going on here. He has his EEG <laughs> on his head. He has orange tinted glasses on. He has headphones, headphones on. You know what he doesn't have? 
a lot of water, or a granola bar. He's oh, replaced his midnight snack with a midnight binge. Oh. Looks like he's settling in, folks. I, I think we are getting into sleep territory now. Melissa had such a hard night last night. I really want her to do better today. So we can see her underneath that blanket. It's a 15 pound weighted blanket. For some people, a weighted blanket can be very soothing. For others, it can make them feel stuck and claustrophobic. We're seeing some tossing and turning. I think she's a little bit less restless, though. That, oh, he's up, he's and up, he's, up. He's, he's out, up. he's gone. Do we have a bathroom break here? What's happening, buddy? Yep, he's yeah. back. Yeah. Oh, Greg, don't grab the water bottle. If we look at Melissa's EEG, it only yeah. took her 11 minutes to fall asleep tonight. That is a dramatic improvement. Yeah. Yesterday, over 30. She is comfortable in that. Yeah. So it does seem like she has managed her stress and anxiety a little bit better here on day two. So we can see on Greg's EEG readout that he's sleeping pretty soundly. He's entering a REM stage of sleep now, so perhaps he's dreaming? I Could hope be. so. But we'll see how he does in yeah. his wake-up tests. Wakey, wakey. Good morning, sleepyhead. Hello. How are you feeling today? Well, I mean, I'm still just waking up. Yeah. <laughs> I think better. My sleep did personally feel better last night, but I don't actually know. Hi, good morning. I have to go down to the wake-up test without any coffee, without any breakfast, and it's just go, go, go. Good morning. Are you ready for your wake-up test today? I actually am. Yeah? <laughs> so, first up is your memory test. Okay, yep, here we go. Hum. Hum. Red. Red. Two. Pine. Queen. Queen. Shift. Shift. Taste. And rat. Whenever you're ready, you can start to recite them back. Okay. Right, okay. Box. Shift. Queen. Two. Hum, red. I, I don't know. You got six. You missed red. You said red? Yeah. Oh, no. The <laughs> word that you missed was shift. Okay. <laughs> and your mood test. I'm going to say I feel a lot more lively than last time. I feel kind of peppy, though. You're always peppy in the morning, Greg. <laughs> peppy person. The reaction test. Okay. Thank you, Melissa. That completes your morning testing. We'll see you upstairs in the judges' room very shortly. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now I'm gonna go eat food. <sighs> Greg and Melissa, we're moments away from one of you leaving the sleep house. Oh no, okay. <laughs> How do you feel? I think I did better than the baseline. But... Which is the point of the competition. I know, I know, I know. But you definitely looked well-rested this morning. Oh, thank you. I mean, you look great. <laughs> How did you feel with the orange-tinted glasses? I thought they were really effective. I really was feeling relaxed before bed. Great. Melissa, how was your time with the blanket? I loved it. I actually think I might get one after. Like, it restricted me from, like, tossing and turning a lot. I know you sat down with our therapist, Katie Morton. She gave you a few tips and tricks to take home with you. What of those things do you think you'll use? I didn't realize how simple it was to just breathe. And it also made me think I was breathing wrong <laughs> the whole entire time. You're, like, tricking your brain to stop worrying and just focusing on that. Yeah, so I love to journal, but I usually do it during the day, where, as Katie said, why not do it before bed so that you can get those thoughts out, which I thought was really smart. So what I'm hearing is you're going to have some epic wind-down routines before bed when you get home. Yeah, I thought you said wind-down, and I was like, maybe that's what we just needed was wine. <laughs> we calculated a sleep score based on four criteria. The percentage of time you spent in deep sleep, the amount of time it took for you to fall asleep, how restless you were overnight, and how you performed on a panel of wake-up tests. Before we reveal your final scores, let's review your last night of sleep. <laughs> Greg, about last night, yeah. where do I even begin? 
<laughs> okay, I think I might have leaned into these glasses heavily. We discovered your TikToks and we wanted to review those oh, no. along with your night's sleep. <laughs> they're, they're particularly weird, okay? I was tired. <laughs> I didn't even hear any of this. Okay. Everyone's talking about the coronavirus. I thought we can't forget about the rabies virus. You went for it. <laughs> I swear to God, I went to sleep at oh, some wow. point. Uh, okay. Greg, you took 63 minutes to fall asleep. Oh, no. Now, you were wearing the orange glasses as your sleep aid, but you also used your phone a lot more. The sleep aid is not meant to make it so that you can use your phone more. You're still supposed to use good sleep hygiene. You received an above average amount of deep sleep last night. Nice. Okay. Although it wasn't as much as you got on night one. Are you serious? Uh -oh. I really think that going on your phone is a horrible idea. <laughs> oh my God, because that was the main difference. Even though you didn't receive as much deep sleep as you did in night one, your restlessness score actually improved. Okay. So when you weren't using the bathroom, you had a pretty efficient sleep. Greg, on night one, your sleep score was 74. Greg, your sleep score for the final night on sleeping with friends is... Oh. Oh, oh, oh. 78. Ooh, so I did improve. So I'm happy at least that, because I don't feel completely crazy. Still in the running. You are. Melissa, let's take a look at your time in bed last night. All right. Wow. That's a lot less. Oh my gosh, yeah, you look dead. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> it felt good, like I actually felt really calm. I mean, it could be anyone's game because you got a 78. That's really high. Pretty high. I don't know. Well, our EEG revealed that it only took you 11 minutes to fall asleep last <gasps> wow. night. Wow. Oh my God. I was I was still picking my nose and watching TikToks <laughs> at that point. <laughs> On night one, you spent 24% of your night in deep sleep, which is average. On night two, you spent 33% of your sleep in deep sleep. Wow. Oh my God, yeah. I need a weighted blanket. <laughs> but, ah, there it is. Your wake up test score decreased. Yeah. Your score from night one was 63. Melissa, your score from night two of sleeping with friends is 90. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> that is so good. The winner of round one of Sleeping With Friends is... <laughs> Melissa! Good job. Thank you. Wow. You were fierce competition. Yeah. Really, I was worried. I thought so too. <laughs> you improved your sleep score by 27 points. Melissa, we're looking forward to seeing you in the final round. Greg, your sleep cycles have ended. Oh my God. We hope you have a better night's rest in your own bed at home. Oh my gosh, okay. Thank you for sleeping with us. Ugh, one of my many walk of shames. Here we go. <laughs> Melissa, good luck. I've learned that sleep is so important and it's precarious. And I also feel when I wake up every morning, I assess my sleep. And now I'm realizing that when you actually scientifically study it, it's a lot different than what you feel. So I think I'm gonna be less stressed about the night sleep that I had because maybe I didn't actually know how deep or actually effective that sleep was. I am so excited that I did well. And I think I have some new tools to try out at home. Next time on Sleeping With Friends, is his mouth open? Is his leg up in the air? Interesting. We meet two new contestants who we hope will sleep deeper with some quirkier sleep technology. Like, OK, it's 2020. <laughs> it's time to sleep with robots. <laughs> Plus, we look at how to fall asleep when you're stressed. When those thoughts start swirling, we utilize some thought stopping techniques. And how to breathe your way to relaxation. Sorry, Greg, I've got a new sleeping buddy. Sleep well.